do a railway station test and find the URI, it's a real thing. Um, but when you try and look that up, you get uh, what's called a spatial object, which is a, a concrete representation of Manchester Cathedral. Now, there will be many, many such concrete representations. Ordnance Survey will make available representations of that at multiple scales with different attribution. So you can have lots of these things, but what you also have is a, a, a dot URI, which provides a description of that thing. That can act as a, um, a, a register of all the individual concrete representations. So, sorry, that's a bit long, maybe the next picture will make it a little bit clearer. Here's another example. Here's the River Thames. So, by the URI, you look that up, you get a 303 redirected to a dot URI, which can contain a register of concrete um, instances of representations of the Thames. Any one of those concrete instances through content negotiation can be made available in multiple forms. So, that's how we chose to interpret the emerging. Um, rules around uh, like when it comes to location, spatial data, um, the building data. So we, we put together, uh, for instance, these pilots are with the college <coughs> guys at the University of East Anglia. The problem we had here was how do you seamlessly link from a journal publication that describes the kind of data uh, through into the whole sequence of um, data sets and, and raw data that the, all the inquiries that were done as a parliamentary inquiry, university inquiry, and, 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 well, said nothing wrong with your science, completely fine, but you've got to do a better job of getting your data and working as a So that means the raw data, all the processing that was done, as well as the final published process data. So we put together a system using these emerging big data principles uh, that's your seen. So we use DOIs, that's another element of the, of the picture here, uh, from the research publication through to the entire uh, graph of linked data. Um, there's also there's a lot of work going on the open geospatial consortium around geosparkle. So this is adding in spatial query to the general sparkle uh, uh, query language. Um, and uh, we at the Bureau have a, um, a research collaboration with CSIRO, and we're working on a number of these issues right now. Uh, some across financial is doing some best things in the world I think, around how we bring that spatial data infrastructure well together with the semantic web world. And, and a lot of what goes on in those two worlds is very similar, so we actually think it's going to be pretty easy to put a thin layer on top of our existing spatial data infrastructure to link data, respect to the forecasting agents and human agents, which are really about environmental intelligence. And, and just for instance, uh, our water data that we um, encourage, because it comes from providers we have to inherit whatever emissions come along with it, we're strongly encouraging this very comments for that massive. Uh, all the data. And uh, we, we plan on uh, doing some pilots this year around the data and then seeing how far we can proceed with some standards. So I think that was it. So, what's your question?
the, the spatial community is a lot more advanced than the semantic web community. So I've sat through ontology development workshops where you know you, you people talk about their concepts and you've got ontologists in the room that works it up, but no one's asking the question, does someone else already define that term out there? Can we use that? But in the spatial community, for many, many years now we've used the idea of developing our data models and using concepts of the elsewhere. So the, the, all the OGC stuff is built on a stack of standards dealing with temporal coordinate systems, geometry, topology, uh, reference systems. There's a stack of base models that are already there that we can really use. And then if I want to make a statement about what it will work out, I'm not sure I'm using the right language for this question, but bear with it. There seems to be an awful lot of importance in this link world in sort of ontological links and the subject matter and the language within a particular subject matter. Some might say that that actually begs the question of the whole link, semantic link, the thing itself. Uh, I've only heard the problem with the latest thing. Uh, I say there's a very big jury, very much still out on that one. Um, and Tim himself uh, says that wherever possible, we use vocabularies. If you're going to make statements about things, don't invent your own terms for that. If you want to say that someone works for some organisation, use a term that's already out there for that. Reuse vocabularies and ontologies. Now, what we actually see in practice, on the other hand, are people. Someone wants to publish some data, they say, right, let's just get this out there, let's make up our own vocabulary and ontology for describing the relationships in our data. That's a really bad thing because it means that we then end up with different terms, different that subject and object predicate, different predicates being used for the same thing, They're expressing the same relationships and describing <coughs> the same subject matter. Now, this is where I think actually the, the spatial lot more advanced than the semantic web community. So I've sat through ontology development workshops where you know you, you, people talk about their concepts and you've got ontologists in the room that works it up, but no one's asking the question, does someone else already define that term out there? When we use that, but the, in the spatial community, for many, many years now, we've used the idea of developing our data models and using concepts that have been defined elsewhere. So the, the, all the OGC stuff is built on a stack of standards dealing with temporal coordinate systems, geometry, topology, uh, reference systems. There's a stack of base models that are already there that we really use. And then if I want to make a statement about water courses, I don't even get the definition of water course. I go and find a model that's already out there for that. So I think the discipline and governance we've got in the spatial world around developing our data models and our, our, our vocabulary and ontologies is a discipline we can bring to the semantic world in my impression of this very undisciplined.